best way to see hockey. That's easy. Just be sure you have a seat at every home game with season tickets. If you can't handle that, share the same choice seats and all the excitement with a friend or neighbor. And for those of you wishing to come as a group, an easy group plan makes it possible for you and your friends to see Roadrunner hockey at a reduced rate. you're going to be a hockey player, you have to go right through with it. I find just sitting in the dressing room and being around the equipment and uh, taking care of little things that you're getting a frame of mind that you're ready to play. I can't really walk in and just step into the gear and go. Some days you hate the game, and other days it's just a love for the game that you can't express. I think a lot of times I'm so mentally into the game that I don't realize things have happened until after. 
You know, you can come out the next day and you'll have a bruise and you can't remember where it came from. A hockey player builds from the inside with desire, determination, and a love for the game. What sets him apart from other professional athletes is a unique toughness and the equipment he wears. The most important thing is your skates. If you don't have skates, well, you don't just don't roll. Some guys shave their sticks in preparation for a game. They shave down the heels and they shave down the toes. And some guys tape the stick from heel to the toe. Tape on the stick is a personal type thing. Some guys use white tape because it's lighter than black tape. Some guys use black tape because they feel it has, you can feel the puck better with a with black tape because it's a little heavier. Some guys tape it the whole length of the stick because you can hide the puck on your stick. That, I think, was the original idea, other than it protects your stick from breaking. The guy that's got the puck, he passes it, you got to hit him. Take him out of the play so he can't get back in it. And if we do that, I think we're going to stay away from a lot of trouble. And we'll stop their skating game. If we stop that, we're going to beat them, guys. Come on, it's up to us. Desert? Yes, and the game has enjoyed tremendous acceptance to the unceasing amazement of millions in colder areas. In just seven short years, the Roadrunners earned major league status, acquiring a franchise in the World Hockey Association, and in their very first big league season, surprised virtually everyone by icing a strong contender for championship honors. Our desert environment also nurtured a new breed of hockey fans. Transplanted Northerners combined with native Arizonans who added their own unique perceptions of the game and an enthusiasm for the sport seldom seen elsewhere. Ronnie? Yeah. Ray? Now look, back man wants his penalties up, eh? Make sure you watch for that uh, goaltender, okay? It's uh, not letting him want to wind up there, eh? No. That's the key to it. For my duties, uh, primarily the center iceman is the quarterback of the line to make sure that we're all ready and we all know where we're going. It's a team thing and uh, I have to be probably the spokesman on the, on the ice when we're rolling. Stop here for going forward, Nolik. Face-offs are so important, yeah, because it gives you possession of the puck. Okay, Jerry, you got that side. If you're not winning face-offs, you're not going to win games. To play well, I think you can only... Uh, go about a minute and a half, maybe two minutes without a rest. And then I think you have to get off the ice. It's a, it's a type of sport where you have to give 100%, and you can't just do that for five or 10 minutes. In certain instances, it's tough to go against a big guy in front of the net if you're fighting a defense when he's physically stronger than you, then you just have to outsmart him. It's as much mental as it is physical. You have to make sure everyone's ready, but you have to be that much more ready than everyone else. Inside, you have to have the confidence that you're gonna beat that guy and you have to know where you're going to go with it and uh, be ready to compensate in case something goes wrong. Get out of here! Get out of here! What's that? One more word and you're gone! Let's go number nine! Come on, come on! Number nine, Phoenix, for charging.
just try to stop them any way we can. They're really, uh, there's so many variations of shots that you just can't say, oh, I'm going to use my glove to stop them here or my stick over here. You just stop it with whatever you can get there the fastest. It's an awful feeling standing there knowing there's a puck coming, but you don't know where it is. You know you've got a tremendous amount of responsibility on you. Being a forward, you can make mistakes, and a defenseman and the goaltender can make them up for a defenseman. can make mistakes, and the goaltender can cover up for him. But if a goaltender makes mistakes, uh, they always put a red light on. It's an awful feeling. Uh, knowing that you should have had it. Sometimes you got 15,000 fans up there in your own oh, building yeah. saying, well, I could have stopped that one, and uh, no doubt they probably could have uh, under the same circumstances. And there's so many things that go through your mind really that you don't really have time to sort it out. I think it's strictly just reflex actions. They say uh, scoring goals is fun, but stopping is hard work, and it uh, seems like all a goaltender has to do is the hard work part of the job. Look at the foot, fella! Look at the foot! Well, as a centerman, I'm supposed to go in and in the offensive zone and pretty much uh, start the plays up. The quickness in which I, I get off the mark to, uh, to start the, the forechecking is going to be the key to the whole tempo of the game. I have to go in and, and be forechecking and buzzing. If I don't buzz, if I don't skate, then the opportunities are not going to present themselves. Uh, if you cut a man off in the corner, then uh, take a man and play his body, then the winger can come in and pick up the puck that's laying free. Go in and force the other team to make mistakes, jump on them, and capitalize. Some guys wear mouthpieces. No, I don't because I, am a, I talk quite a bit when I'm out in the ice, and I think that's about 20% of my game is talking. Beautiful play, boy. Beautiful play. Try to work, Mike. Shoot it! When I'm in front of the net and I make a pass, and my teammate scores, I think that it's, uh, it's one of the, the, the most thrilling parts of, the, of hockey. I, I get sometimes more of a kick out of that than I do score myself. I think a defenseman has to be, because of the way the game is, has to be uh, maybe a better puck handler than most of the other players, uh, has to almost have a sixth sense. I've seen many players in hockey with so much talent, but they didn't have that hockey sense, if I can call it that, and uh, they weren't able to do much. Uh, it's a team sport, and you have to use everybody on the ice. It's really, I think, a team that plays great positional hockey is much uh, better off than another team with more talent, even. As far as in the offensive zone, there's been many a time I think I should rush right in there and uh, get involved. But, uh, you know, it's not my job. It's uh, certain times it might be, but uh, more often than not, I should be right where I am on the point and uh, be ready to get back in case there's a break or be ready to go in, too, you know, if the puck's loose. Any, any uh, odd situation in hockey, three on two, two on one, uh, any time that you, uh, you have a man advantage, I think you have to force them to make a great play and make them make a perfect pass to uh, score a goal. If they make the perfect pass, then they deserve the goal. Blocking spots, I think, comes back to the hockey sense. Uh, you just learn by doing. Uh, you'll go down a couple times and they'll go around you and you say, well, I'm not going to do that again. And you develop your timing. I don't worry about blocking shots uh, during a game, but after the game, I think I must have been nuts to drop in front of that shot. You know, it could have killed me. We play the game, I think, primarily for the playoffs and to be winners. Uh, but you also feel that the fans are, are there and they uh, they should see. I don't feel I should entertain as such like doing fancy things on the ice or anything like that, but I, I feel I should uh, get them a good hockey game. The people that are there are a real noisy crowd and they get, they get you going. A game that maybe you're down a little bit, you're tired, uh, they can stimulate you to, uh, to put out a little more than uh, you thought you could even. They're an asset to a team. A lot of 
Like I think they're worth one or two goals for us when we come home. Every time we do make a goal, it's just a great feeling because you know you're that one step closer to winning. When I miss a shot, especially a clear open shot, then uh, it, uh, you feel like going right off the ice. <laughs> a lot of times you come back and score just because of it. The personality of most professional teams is almost always the reflection of one, possibly two, so-called superstars. The Roadrunners, on the other hand, project a team personality, combining hustle, speed, aggressiveness, and almost total unselfishness in the pursuit of a winning record. Much of the Roadrunner personality is embodied in the team coach, Sandy Huckle, who in his patient and unprepossessing way continues to prove that hockey is, after all, a team game and an outfit which disciplines itself and plays by a system can be a consistent winner. Major League Hockey, where the action is. The world's fastest, most exciting sport is played by the Phoenix Roadrunners of the World Hockey Association. Plan now to participate in a full season of hockey action with season tickets. Get hooked on hockey, the best game in town.